What's going on guys? This is Trendkill and today I'm going to be tackling what is probably the most common question that I am asked basically like every video that I post at least one person says something like hey Trend I'm getting ready to start my own channel what do I do? Like, how do I YouTube is the question that, you know, is like a general term, I guess. And uh, there's really, it's, it's a really hard question to answer. So what I'm going to do is kind of put together a multiple video series. I don't know how long the series is going to be, but I figured I would give you guys at least my opinion. Now, first off, let me give you a disclaimer. I am by far not the biggest, nor the most knowledgeable, nor the most experienced YouTuber on the internet. But... Since you guys are asking me, I thought I would offer my opinion. And I know this is a big pet peeve of mine when people that are small are like, here's how you'd be a great YouTuber. And I, I don't want to be that. You know, I just want to give you guys my humble opinion. You take it with a grain of salt, as you should everything you see on the internet. And understand that this is not the only way to do it. My opinions are not the only that matters, but this is how I have got to the point where I've gotten and how I feel like I'm going to continue to grow. So with all that out of the way, let's jump into the hardware, I guess we should probably talk about first. Because obviously if you're going to be putting gaming videos on YouTube, you probably need a way to record your games. So first off, let's talk about software for just a second because if you're playing on PC, you don't need any hardware. You can download several programs. One is called Fraps. It's probably the most widely used program and that will allow you to record your full screen gameplay. And the only thing that I really know about Fraps, and ex excuse my ignorance, I'm uh, largely a console gamer as far as YouTube is concerned. The only thing that I really know about Fraps is that it can be a resource hog. I've heard of people in the 100 to 120 range in frames per second. And when they're recording with Fraps, they drop down to like 50 or 60. So I don't know much about it. I know it's basically the standard software for recording from PC. Uh, other than that, there's programs like Game Cam, or actually if you're playing in a windowed mode that's not like a full screen game, like maybe Minecraft, if you run Minecraft in a windowed mode, you can use a product called Camtasia that's actually really good software. I used that back when I recorded video trainings for uh, the last company I worked for, so I've got a lot of experience with Camtasia. It's also a great product, but I just wanted to kind of interject that if you're, if you're doing recording on PC, you really don't need any hardware. It's mainly software recording from what I understand, so if anybody knows any different, I'll Obviously, leave a comment below so that I don't, you know, lead people in the wrong direction. But otherwise, let's go back to console gaming and talk about the hardware that you're going to need to record from like a Wii or an Xbox or a PS3 or something like that. So the industry standard first off on YouTube, probably, I would say, is 720p. And there are people that are recording still in 480 that haven't made the 720 switch. And there are people that are recording beyond 720 into 1080p. However, I think 1080p is a little advanced for YouTube and most people's up and download speeds currently. I mean, I, I, when I try to watch 1080p videos and I've got a, a 20 down and a 10 up, or maybe it's a 30 download and a 10 upload speed, and uh, even I have problems with YouTube buffering on 1080p videos, especially the big ones. And the other benefit of making 720p videos versus 1080p is that the upload speeds are not going to just destroy you because 1080p files are massive. So I think 720p is probably still widely acceptable on YouTube, and I don't think anybody's going to complain that you're not recording in 1080p. So anyway, let's talk about everything. Let's talk about 1080p down to 720, down to 480, and we'll give you your options. Um, if you're going to record in 1080, you have to have a capture card that installs into a desktop, usually like PCI Express slot or something like that. The one that comes to mind is the Blackmagic Intensity Pro. That's got an HDMI input on the back of it and records your games in real time through that capture card. So if you want to record in 1080p, that is the only way. Now let me also say that Blackmagic also makes a USB device that will record through HDMI. However, understand that it will not record in true 1080p because the, the uh, video bandwidth bottlenecks at your USB port. So it requires a USB 3 to run, which a lot of current computers don't have unless you just built a new computer. And even through 1080p, or I'm sorry, even through USB 3, will not transfer streaming video into 1080p. So if somebody knows any different, obviously, again, let everybody know, but that's how I understand it. If you want to record in full 1080p, get you a PCI Express card like a Blackmagic Intensity Pro. Beyond that, if you want to record via a USB you know, device 
and you want to record in 720, a very, very good option, and probably, this is probably the standard completely console-wide on YouTube, is the HD PVR from Hapog. That records in 720p via component cables that run from the Xbox to the back of the uh, PVR, from the PVR to the back of the TV, and also from the PVR USB into your computer. Basically, that also runs in real time. So as you're playing the game on the console, the video is running through the PVR into the TV and also through the PVR into the computer. So it basically acts as a splitter, but it also converts the component signal to data being able to transfer through the USB and being recorded by a specific software that comes with the hardware. So it's really not complicated, but you just got to have the right thing. Now, the issue becomes... The HD PVRs and the Blackmagic Intensity Pros are $200 plus, usually. If you want to record in 480 only, which is standard definition, and you want to save yourself some money, you can get a product by Dazzle, which is, uh, they make a lot of capture cards, they have for a long time. They make a lot of video converters and things like that, but... If you get a Dazzle, I think they're 50 to 100 bucks, something like that. And that would be for the guy who says, hey, you know, I love playing games, but I don't know if I'm going to like talking about them or editing the videos or even putting my face and name and, you know, my voice on the internet. I don't know if that's my thing. Let me just try it and see what I think. That's the kind of capture card I would get. I would get a $50, just a 480p standard definition type capture card and just go that route just to see if you like it. But that's also for a YouTuber on a budget. If you don't want to spend $200 because you're afraid you're not going to be successful and you're not going to make that money back, then do not spend two, 300 bucks on an expensive capture card. Get yourself a Dazzle and just try it out. Uh, let's see. Beyond the video hardware, you're obviously also going to need a, a good microphone. And let's go through these really quick. There are a couple different types of microphones you can get. You can get a USB microphone, or you can get a more of a professional style microphone that's called a condenser microphone that runs into a product called a preamp that powers the microphone signal. And then that runs into the line in or, you know, microphone in jack on your PC. And the benefits to that is that you're obviously going to get a much more professional sound. However, it's more complicated and probably going to be more expensive than a USB microphone route. Now, if you want to go with a USB mic, there is no going, you know, you got this going into this, going into the jack, and then blah, blah, blah. It strictly plugs in USB, and you're done. So it's very easy, and you can actually get some really good quality microphones via USB. The Again, I'm going to go back to using the quote-unquote standard. The standard high-quality microphone for most gaming YouTubers out there right now is a product called the Blue Yeti or the Blue Snowball. They're made by the same company. Obviously, they're both called the Blue something. And the Snowball is going to be the cheaper version of the Yeti. And the Yeti is going to take out a lot of the background noise that the Snowball has. It's more of a focused array instead of the Snowball, which kind of sits on your desk and just grabs audio where it can. So... Um, both of those are very, very good products. Both of those can give you the same quality that a condenser mic can. Just a condenser mic's a more professional take on it, and a condenser mic's are going to be very focused on your face, like your voice, not the things that are going on around it. Uh, there's another product out there called the Audio-Technica AT2020, and that is also a very high-quality microphone, and I know several directors that use that product and absolutely swear by it. So that's another option if you don't like the blue products that you can use. Now, again, going back to the YouTuber on a budget, I have actually, and this sounds funny, but... My preamp shot craps on me a few months back, and I was like, oh crap, I was right in the middle of a video, like, what am I going to use? And I was just rifling through a drawer, and I found my old Guitar Hero World Tour microphone. It's just a USB mic that plugs into your Xbox, and you sing into it, and that actually had very, very good audio quality. You'd be surprised. I bet you can't go back and pick which of the videos I recorded with the Guitar Hero mic versus the Shure condenser mic. So, uh... If you're on a budget and you only got 15, 20 bucks to spend, get yourself the Guitar Hero World Tour mic. You can order them off Amazon and, uh, you know, save yourself some money there. Again, eventually, once you start making some money, I would move into a better quality microphone. But 
if you just want to try it out, if you're just starting out and you don't know if you're going to do it for the future, then obviously you want to buy the cheaper products and see if it's going to work for you. But regardless, other than that, really you're just focusing on hardware accessories. There's not much beyond that that you really, really need hardware-wise. You want to get yourself a good mic stand. If you're going to have a desk stand, you want to make sure it's got some shock absorption on it. A lot of the times you'll see microphones that are, that are kind of suspended in a bungee cord system, and that helps keep the vibrations from your PC fans and people walking around the house and traffic and things like that. You'd be surprised what a microphone sitting on a desk can pick up. Um, I prefer a floor stand just because it kind of keeps my desk clear. I don't have a lot of clutter and it completely eliminates the, you know, the vibrations and stuff coming from the desk. So I like to go with a boom mic stand just because it gives you more options. And if you don't know what a boom mic stand is, just Google it or go on Amazon and search for boom mic stand, obviously. And it'll kind of show you what it is. You can maneuver it in several different ways. So you can have it sitting behind your desk with the mic kind of hanging over the desk like a DJ or something. You can have it to the left or the right of you. You can have it behind you with it kind of coming around your face. Um, you can do all kinds of stuff with a boom mic stand. So it gives you a lot of maneuverability and it works for multiple rooms and room sizes, just all kinds of stuff. So that's what I like to go with. Also invest just 10 bucks into a pop filter that kind of keep your voice softer on a microphone. If you've never recorded audio into a mic before, you know the P sounds like the P sounds uh, of words and the S sounds like steak or, you know, stuff like that. Those can really be irritating if the noise goes right into the microphone. But it makes just a loud pop noise or the the can be really high pitched and annoying so uh, it's probably annoying right there with me doing it five times in a row but a pop filter is really going to soften those things so you don't turn your audience off audibly, you know, with your annoying sounds that you're making with your voice. But uh, regardless, guys, that is about it for hardware. I can't think of anything else that you would absolutely, like, really need. Uh, if you haven't already, you may want to invest in a decent set of headphones just to kind of keep the uh, audio isolated to your ears so that if you are using an array mic like the Blue Snowball, you're not getting feedback from your TV or computer monitor or whatever. So a nice set of headphones will always work. Usually if I'm recording in headphones, I have one of my headphones on my ear and the other one off so that I can hear my voice so that I don't sound retarded while I'm talking. <laughs> uh, I may sound retarded anyway, I don't even know. But uh, other than that, guys, that's going to do it for part one. Uh, part two, we're probably going to look at software. And uh, maybe in part three, we'll go into software settings. And you know, I don't know. We'll see how you guys like this. And if you want more information, we'll just keep on with the series. And I'll give you every last bit of info I have. I'm not going to bogart any information for myself and like have these all these super secrets. I want you guys to be as successful as I have been. And I want all of us to be as successful as some of the, the bigger guys. And uh, I, don't, I don't want YouTube gaming to die. I want it to continue because I have two much fun doing it. So uh, if you guys have any questions or you think I was just off base on something or if you need to correct anything or if you just have concerns about anything, obviously, leave them in a the comment below and uh, we'll discuss them. So until part two, guys, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks for stopping by and hanging out with me and we'll see you later. Thanks, guys.